Are there any slogans you shouldn't say or is there anything in particular to be aware of? Berlin, one year after the October 7th attacks. I'm not going to remain silent out of fear, like I was doing a few months ago. I want to be the voice of those Palestinians who still don't dare to speak out. I think people have stopped hiding their anti-Semitism. Now they feel they can speak and behave according to what they've always thought. A year that has changed people's lives. After the 7th of October, I learned that if you want to fight anti-Semitism, you, can, you cannot do it behind the scenes. You have to show your face. Maybe the right path is to put humans at the center of things, rather than political ideologies or ethnic or religious backgrounds. If we can't do that, then as a society we've completely failed. For the past six months, Jacqueline Schilbayer has joined demonstrations in Berlin against the war in the Middle East. For me, a free Palestine doesn't mean Israel has to disappear. The return of all Palestinians doesn't mean the displacement of all Jewish people. I'm very strongly in favor of coexistence, peace and togetherness. These are the values that my family passed on to me. As a Palestinian, Jacqueline is stateless. That means she doesn't have German or any other citizenship. She finds that the demonstrations give her strength. The solidarity here means a lot to me. In a way, it helps me to keep on living. It means I'm not alone. There are people around me who'll carry me when I can't stand on my own feet and raise their voices for me when I can't speak for myself. It stops me from feeling so isolated. Time and again, the demonstrations are infiltrated by people with anti-Semitic views. The police are powerless to stop them. And the ones who pay the price are those protesters who want to express legitimate concerns. Because I'm stateless, I can't vote in elections. There are lots of rights that German people have that aren't available to me. But I can exercise my right to demonstrate. So that's one of the ways I participate in democracy. Maya Wolfberg moved to Berlin from Israel seven years ago. After the 7th of October, life kind of stopped. Like, we live in two worlds now. We have, like, our world where we are um, suffering and everything changed. And, like, we have the, the next world that people are continuing with their life, like nothing is going on. Maya is taking part in a demonstration calling for the release of hostages held by Hamas. The protesters have to contend with more than just the live music coming from nearby. There are also loud shouts from passers-by. An organiser confronts them. It's not the first time I hear it, obviously, but every time I don't know what will be the next reaction of the uh, people that are screaming um, these slogans. It just makes me feel super sad that this is the situation to see young people. 
and they're just going because it's kind of a new fashion now uh, to scream free Palestine on the streets. For 11 months, we've been meeting here on the 7th of every month to protest against anti-Semitism in this city. As always, we'll have a minute's silence for the victims who have been murdered in Israel, as well as the civilian victims in Gaza. So I ask you to pause and reflect for a moment. And think about these people. We are all the time sad. We are going to bed sad and we are waking up when we are sad. The war is not over, the hostages are not home yet. Um, like, anti-Semitism is just rising everywhere. And we, I always say to myself that I cannot get used to this pain because otherwise I will just stay at home and not do anything. Um, and I cannot, I cannot let this happen. In. I'm happy that these events are taking place. Um, I think I would be more happier if more people will show up and show solidarity. Um, yeah, but we, we still have to do them if it's for 10 people or for more. Hi. My nails are painted, but can you save these two fingers? Sure. How did you do them? Just red. Jacqueline is getting married in a week. Before the wedding, there'll be a henna party. Her sister Shireen is going to paint her hands with traditional patterns. I want this kind of pattern. It doesn't matter where. The last year has played a huge role in strengthening my identity. The more ornate, the more Arabic, the more kitsch, the better. I love it. As a child and a teenager, I was really influenced by how badly Arab culture was viewed in Germany. I desperately wanted to be Western. I didn't want to be like the other Arabs, like the bad Arabs. I wanted to show everyone how well integrated I was, how much I rejected those other things. And at some point I realized that was totally wrong. Hello, Mama. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. We come mainly from the West Bank, but we have relatives in Gaza. And most of those relatives are no longer living. I found out that my family members had died while I was doing a journalism internship. We had a big editorial meeting, and there were people there saying things like, it was collateral damage. It needed to happen. These deaths serve a bigger purpose. And I just felt so empty in that moment. It really dehumanized us as a people. Das hat uns wirklich als Volk entmenschlicht. The only thing people associate us with is this Middle East conflict. No one's ever asked me what kinds of things we like to eat, what music we listen to, what Palestinian artists there are, or what traditions we have. Those questions don't get asked. The questions I get asked are about terrorism, violence, and anti-Semitism. 
You feel like you're being treated as an argument for or against. You're not a human being. You're just a way for people to reinforce their opinion. I mean, if I can't have a citizenship, then at least let me exist as a human being. Then let me wenigstens as a human Susanna only became aware that she was Jewish later in life. Now she's learning Hebrew. Other people might find it easy. For me, it's not easy at all. I think it's simply a matter of politeness to at least be able to order a coffee and say please and thank you in Hebrew. She's been intensively exploring her Jewish identity, and the past year has changed the way she thinks about Israel. Israel is home for all of us Jews. We always tell ourselves that if everything goes wrong, we can always go to Israel. But I'm afraid of losing that option. Am I safe there? Could I go there if elections in Germany didn't turn out the way I expect them to? And if I were afraid to stay here? I feel very tense. Of course, I now ask myself whether I should cover up my Star of David. But I've made a very firm personal decision that I'm not going to. On her way to the synagogue, Zuzana talks about the restrictions she feels exist in her daily life. It would be nice if it weren't just football fans who could fly their flags from their windows. If I could hang an Israeli flag too. But I wouldn't dare to, because I'd be afraid that the next day the red triangle of Hamas would be on my door. Shortly after October 7, 2023, Jacqueline gave her first interview. Back then, she wanted to remain anonymous. As a Palestinian, I just felt I was being made out to be a criminal. But I have the feeling that there's been a shift in society now that's given me more courage to be in front of the camera. I've also realized that I don't want to be a part of the thing I'm always criticizing, which is that we're not represented in the media. Many Palestinian people said no to being part of this film. Their reasons included a lack of trust in German media, a responsibility to family members, and a fear of being portrayed as anti-Semitic. Joanna Hassoun is a Lebanese-born German-Palestinian. Her organization, Trans Agency, tries to foster dialogue and speak openly about the issues. Sometimes I'm fine with it, sometimes I'm not. But each time I find myself doing it again, despite my better judgment, even though it seems pointless, because everything's already been said, and yet we're still not treated like human beings. But when someone gets in touch and says, thank you for expressing what I was feeling, because it made me feel less alone, that's when I know why I'm doing it. Because I'm not doing it because I enjoy it. I'm doing it so that we're visible, so that we remain visible. I 
I understand when Palestinians say they're afraid of putting themselves or their family in danger, or that they're afraid they'll be accused of anti-Semitism or whatever. That's completely understandable. And unfortunately, some media outlets, including public broadcasters, have contributed to that fear. Look at the demonstrations, for example. There are peaceful demonstrations. I'm not saying there are hundreds of them, but there are some. They hardly get any attention. The ones that do get attention are the ones that are conspicuous, the ones where there are problems. And of course, that's how media works. Bad news sells better. But that bad news means that we now have racist attacks and people feel completely secure and free to insult us, not just on social media, but also in public, in person. That's problematic. And the media is contributing to that. I think food is really a good way to bring people together. Um, it's always um, a way to speak to someone's heart. <laughs> I think three weeks more or less after the war started, I had um, a really bad um, inflammation in my stomach and then I, I couldn't eat um, for a few days, anything, and then I, yeah, like I didn't, was in a, even in a mood for cooking. It was Hanukkah, the first time that I actually invited friends to be together and do something. And then I, I cooked a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, it felt like kind of, safe space, I would say, um, where I can have here people and cook and everything, but I don't have to pretend that everything is fine. When someone in, in Israel is getting murdered, it's like the pain that we have, it's like someone of our family has just been murdered. and. A lot of times we feel that other people just don't understand why we take it so hard. Maya's grandfather survived the Holocaust as a young boy in Berlin, hidden in a cellar. That's one of the reasons she chooses to live here today. <laughs> what are you making today? Chala and shakshuka. Maya's husband Jana is German and not Jewish. This morning there was uh, this sign, uh, Antifa and uh, Hakenkreuz at the corner of the street. Mm. It's now already um, crossed, uh, so you can't see the original anymore, but yeah, I still reported it. The threats are constant and widespread, which makes it hard for Maya to engage in dialogue. I wouldn't say no now to sit in a room with Palestinians that are open to talk, to discuss about things in a respectful way. Um, but I, I also have my fears at the same time. My biggest fear is that I would be attacked in any way. I'm not talking about um, physical violence, of course, um, also this, but more um, that someone will say something um, even maybe without understanding that it's anti-Semitic um, and being attacked in this way.
Versuch sie schöner aufzutun. Ich finde es schöner, wenn wir die hier mittig lassen. Okay. Warte ich die gerade? The Henna Party before Jacqueline's wedding is a women-only celebration for the bride's friends and relatives. In her case, that includes 200 women from all over the world. There will be Jewish friends there tomorrow, yes. Even though society sees us as being on different sides, we very often felt the same because anti-Muslim racism has risen sharply in recent months, as has anti-Semitism. There's this fear in Germany of being constantly confronted because of your identity. That's something we have in common. A bar in the heart of Berlin's trendy Neukölln district, Beisel sees itself as a pub with politics. It's left-wing and committed to fighting anti-Semitism. In July, Maya and Jana celebrated their wedding here. My grandfather was uh, born in Neukölln um, in 1940, and I thought, yeah, it will be special to do it here um, for us as a sign of a victory that um, even though he, he couldn't grow up here, um, that he had to go on a basement when he was um, two years old, um, we still, like, I'm here and I'm getting married here. Over the past year, the bar has been the target of anti-Semitic graffiti and attacks. I didn't know that people were dancing so much. You didn't know? <laughs> no, like, uh, I always... You didn't uh, when you were before. <laughs> I forgot it already. Are you working tomorrow? No, I was very um, romantic. So you can do it again if you want. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning was also clear for us that... Wir wussten von Anfang an, dass wir Security für die Party brauchen. Das ist mittlerweile für jüdisches Leben normal. ...for Jewish life uh, now in Berlin. Beisel manager Alex discovered a red triangle on the window, a pro-Palestinian symbol more recently used by Hamas to mark its targets. Hopefully people stop doing this sort of thing. It's a left-wing, hip sort of milieu, even though it's madness to identify with a group like Hamas. Otherwise, all we can do is carry on, stick together and show solidarity. The first couple of times we reported it. But now, the police say they've received hundreds or even thousands of reports, which they haven't processed yet. Every Friday, Susanne drives to her synagogue in Berlin. Even before October 7th, it was important to me. Now, of course, it's much, much more important, because I'm not alone when I'm there. Beforehand, we do some schmoozing, a Yiddish word for having a friendly chat. It gives us strength and a feeling of togetherness. It's wonderful. Even after a year, Rabbi Yona Zivers and his congregation are still deeply affected by the events of October 7, 2023. It was a turning point, especially when it came to the reaction to those events. It turned out that even though politicians were saying and doing the right things in terms of supporting Israel, that was perhaps not reflected in society. Anti-Semitism, which was always present in a latent way, is now manifesting itself to an extent that we could have never imagined.
We have to stand up for our cause, including publicly. Of course, it's always a balancing act between security aspects and visibility. But there shouldn't be any need to be scared. Today, Jacqueline's making knefe for the first time, a dessert from her hometown of Nablus in the West Bank. I think food is the only thing people really don't discriminate against. There's a well-known saying, Nazis secretly eat doner kebabs. And I love to cook for other people. I've never experienced so much racism as I have since October 2023. Before that, I was no stranger to anti-Palestinian racism, but now it's taken on a whole new meaning. When people demand that you distance yourself from terrorism, there's an assumption from the outset that you're part of it, that it's up to me to prove that I'm not a terrorist or that I'm against terrorism. And that's crazy. Sometimes I feel like I can't breathe. I just feel like screaming. And because I actually don't want to scream, I try to channel my anger into something constructive. But a year on, I ask myself, what have we actually achieved? My hope is as modest as the idea that there are people like me, Palestinians, Jewish people, Israelis, who stand up for each other who recognize each other's suffering and recognize each other's existence. That's the space in which I move. I would imagine in a city like Berlin it's safer, because there are so many of us here. We're not the only victims, and maybe if now we gather a few communities together to fight anti-Semitism, um, then we, of course, I guess we have better chances to win this fight. There are smart things I can say. <laughs> I know that Germany and Israel have a friendly relationship, and I'm 100% behind that. But if my friend makes a mess of things, then I hold her accountable, so that she'll do better in the future. Criticism isn't always negative. Criticism can also lead to something positive, and I think Germany needs to learn that. 